Welcome everyone, Quistine here with a discussion about the Shadows of Change DLC for Total War Warhammer 3 and of course the price controversy. Something I've mentioned in the videos that I've already done on the subject of this DLC but let's just talk about the situation. The price of either $25 or 25 euros is certainly an extreme increase of price for DLC compared to what we had before. Like even if you consider the Champions of Chaos DLC, which was 15, to this DLC, this is still absurd. It is a ridiculous price increase. And it's the same price as a race pack that the Chaos Dwarves were. Now for the Chaos Dwarves, a lot of people were already angry with that and I it is very understandable why, but at least that was a full race with new mechanics, new legendary lords, an entire unit roster, not just a couple regiments right now. So there was a lot on offer, and the Chaos Dwarves are one of the best races in the game. So you could at least make some kind of value argument with respect to that, though I personally felt and still feel that the price was too much for what they were offering. And you gotta remember that if you tolerate the price increase once, if people tolerate and accept and defend a price increase once, then it's likely going to stay the same in the future. Now, I understand why some people don't care. I'll be quite blunt about it. It doesn't really affect me in many ways either, because one, I am in the create content creator program for Creative Assembly, so I'll be getting a review copy of this DLC anyway. But two, even if I didn't, I would still buy it because obviously I'm doing this for a living. But I have certainly been in that position where I didn't necessarily have a whole lot of money. And asking people to pay this much for a DLC for a game, not a full game, not a new race, but just three legendary lords, one legendary hero, and yes, you do get another legendary hero for free, but asking people to pay this much for this kind of content, it is absurd, I feel. And certainly Creative Assembly and Sega have been responsible in the past for uh, certain practices, business practices, where they were price gouging DLC. Like, remember the unit packs, if you will, in previous Total War games. Uh, especially if we're looking back at Rome 2 or Empire and the way they handled DLC back then. It wasn't a great situation. The reason it changed is because people were not happy about it and made that loud and clear, and they didn't sell. And right now, Creative Assembly is in the situation where when they're making a game, they're making that game not just to sell the initial copies of the game, but also to sell DLC. Now, this does have its upsides, but there are also downsides. Why was Free Kingdoms abandoned by Creative Assembly? Well, because the DLC didn't sell. Why was Troy abandoned? Why is Thrones of Britannia abandoned? Same reason. And this is, by the way, going to be a problem for Creative Assembly going forward because it's one thing to sell DLC for Warhammer games at this current price, to sell lords, to sell races. But if they're going to go with future games, with Total War Pharaoh, with whatever historical game they're going to develop in the future, but if they're going to keep adopting these uh, similar business practices, be it the blood pack, they won race pack, the price increases for overall DLCs, it is quite very possible that those DLCs as well will end up failing and those games will end up being abandoned. While certainly the Warhammer Total War games have been insanely successful for Creative Assembly, they can't just adopt the same kind of business practices that they have in Total War Warhammer in their other titles. It just will not work. But it does seem with these kind of price increases that Creative Assembly is trying to milk their consumer base for all it's worth. They know that a lot of people for all the complaints will ultimately buy it. And I always find, I'm always skeptical of any kind of boycott uh, for something that is as popular as Total War is right now, or as Warhammer is right now. Again, people complain about prices, but companies know they can get away with it. And it's easy to say, oh, just don't buy it if you don't like it, but it's never really that simple. 
because unless there is a critical mass of people that do accept that, it will not change anything. And I've already seen reports from people saying that Shadows of Change was already the one of the most sold uh, DLC uh, pieces of uh, DLC content for Total War, or in general, really, it's apparently incredible, po uh, incredibly popular according to certain Steam st statistics, or at least in terms of pre-order, uh, the pre-order situation. So already, people are buying it on mass for all the complaints for all the people on Reddit. A lot of people are already buying it, but you gotta understand what the consequences are going to be and. I wish I could say I am surprised by the price increase, but I am not because I kind of expected a price increase for future Lord packs when I saw the price increase of the Forge of the Cast Dwarves. And I know, like many other people do, that Forge of the Cast Dwarves, despite its price increase, w sold incredibly well. And we are seeing in the gaming industry this kind of situation where developers and publishers are charging more than they were before for DLC, for base games, and we have also the situation of games as a service. And that's how a lot of games get developed at the moment. Which, again, it is a problem that we have right now in the industry. Everything has gone up in price significantly, and so are games. But what developers are doing, and it's always been the case for a lot of developers, publishers, that they've always tried to price gouge their consumer base, that they've always tried to gain as much money from their consumers as possible, only held in check by what people were willing to tolerate. And if people are willing to tolerate the $25, 25 euro price point for DLC for Total War games going forward, that's going to be the situation. So if this DLC sells incredibly well, and it seems like it will, then you can expect that this is going to be the baseline price going forward. And it's also likely going to increase even more going for forward over the next couple of years. And then we can also start talking about or start asking the questions like how much are these games going to be worth it? It wouldn't surprise me over the next couple of years that we see prices of games go beyond $70, 70 euros into $80, 80 euros. In fact, they already are if you're looking at quite a lot of the special editions that a lot of games do have at the moment. Games are becoming more and more and more expensive. And it's not like the development costs have risen so dramatically as to justify this kind of price increase. They have not. That is the situation that we have at the moment. I think that uh, to an extent, like I need to stress this out. I think it will work out for Creative Assembly and Sega in the short term with Total War Warhammer 3. And I certainly think that they're trying to milk it for all it's worth. And I also think, I do genuinely believe that one of the reasons they're doing it is because they were not happy with all the money, time, and energy spent into developing Immortal Empires as quickly as they did because they would have likely uh, wanted for Immortal Empires, at least the beta version, to be released later than it was. So they kind of had to rush production because Realms of Chaos failed, and now they're so uh, they're trying to recoup their costs. But I stress this out: this can work for them when we're looking at Total War Warhammer games because the popularity of Warhammer, the popularity of the Total War Warhammer games. But for something like Pharaoh. It may not work out. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Pharaoh ends up failing significantly in the same way that Troy did, or Thrones of Britannia uh, did, or Free Kingdoms did. And the issue for Creative Assembly going forward is what are they going to do as a company? Because if they're going to use these same kind of business practices for their other titles, it is going to end up in a disaster for them. That's all I had to say. Costini here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.